Hey guys, I'm Aaron and this is SketchUp Square One where we take a look at the fundamentals of using SketchUp. Today we're going to take a look at a topic that has been requested more than anything else and that is groups. So we're going to hop in and talk about what groups are, why groups are, where groups are, who groups are, maybe just those first two. Anyhow, let's hop in. Let's look at groups. Okay, so first let's talk a little bit about why you'd want a group. There's a couple main reasons. The big one is here. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk about how SketchUp geometry functions. So I'm gonna draw a rectangle on the ground. I'm gonna push, pull it up into a box. I'm gonna come over here and draw a smaller rectangle. And I'm going to push, pull that up into a box as well. So we've talked about faces and edges and all that. Um, if I go here to move and I'm gonna grab it by this corner right here, I'm gonna take this geometry and I'm gonna move it right up against this corner. If I take this still selected geometry and I try to move it, look what happens. So SketchUp geometry by design is sticky. It grabs onto other geometry and connects to it. That is how it works. This is not a problem. This is not a bad thing. This is intentional by design. This is how it's supposed to happen. That doesn't mean you always want it to happen though. So I'm gonna hit Command Z a couple times and get out here so I have my geometry attached again. Sometimes you wanna put geometry together without having it merged together and this is where groups come into play. So what I can do is I can do a group select by clicking and holding with select. Once all this is highlighted, I can right click and I can say make group. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Drag, release, right click, make group. Okay, so now if I was to come in here and say move and grab this group, so you don't have to do, I don't have to select a bunch of stuff now. I only have to select one thing. I click right here. If I put that on the same corner and then I click and move it away, it doesn't connect because they're groups. They are now separate geometry. When you create a group, if you look at your entity info window, it's gonna tell you information about this. Uh, if you have a surface group, it'll tell you the square footage of it. In this case, I actually have a solid, a closed shape, so it tells me the volume. Um, I can come in here and I can put an instance name on here, so I could call this the big box, and then I could call this one a little box. All right, so there's this other thing. So when we talk about groups, we're talking about what, what SketchUp calls objects. So objects are basically collections of faces and edges that are put into a container. A group is a container. There's a second kind of container, which is a component. We're gonna talk about components in the next one. So all of your component questions about, well, what if it was a component? Next video, don't ask them here. Um, seriously, no, I'm just kidding. No, wait till next week. It'll be good. All right. So once I create a group like this, the other reason that I might create a group is, let's say, for example, these two boxes are supposed to be exactly three feet apart. So I'm going to start sliding over. I'm going to type in 36, hit enter. These are now exactly three feet apart. Now, whenever I move this, if I move one of these, I want the other one to move so they're always three feet apart. So what I can do is I can take these two groups, right click, put them into another group. So now I have a group that contains two groups. So if I was to grab and move any of these, look, they go together. These are the big reasons that you would put things into groups. Another option, another reason you would do this would come into tags. Tags control visibility. So what I can do in here with my tagged, my grouped geometry is start tagging. So maybe I will put this little one here. I'll, I'll create two tags. Um, I'll create a new one called little and I'll create another tag called big and what I can do is select this big and say okay put that on the tag big and put this little box on the tag called little. So what does that do? Well that means when I come into my tags and I start turning them on and off I can actually control the geometry of those things separately. And the cool part is even though this is in one group, so they're still gonna move together, but I can turn them on and off separately. And guess what? Because they're in a group, they're locked relatively, so even if it's not visible that I can't select it, it's still gonna come along with it. Groups are incredibly important. It's how you want to create everything in SketchUp. Anytime you put in enough geometry that you would consider it to be a thing, you want to put it inside a group. 
In fact, you don't even have to wait that long. Let's go ahead and move this over and let's start a group from scratch. If I click here where there's nothing, I can click make group right from the start and then I can just start drawing. So maybe I'm going to come in here and uh, I'm going to create a shape like it doesn't just have to be boxes. So here's a shape like this and then I'll, I'll push pull that up. And then when I exit out of this shape, it is now inside of a group. So here's another cool thing about groups once you put it into a group. If I go to move, look at one thing. So if this was just geometry and I wanted to grab it, I'd have handles at the endpoints, midpoints of lines, that kind of thing. Same thing here, but I also have the ability to grab it by the corner of the group. So even though there's no geometry right here in the corner, I can grab it and I could line that empty corner up with the side of this group over here. Something else that's happening is when you go to move a group, these little, little dots show up, these little pluses on here show up. This allows you to click and move and then click to spin the group around the center of the group. What does that mean? That means if I was to take a draw a line here to here, here to here, here to here, and then draw a line and intersect those middles of those four lines, or three lines, I would get a point right in the middle of the volume of the shape, not the shape, but the container, and that's what I'm spinning around. So with normal rotate, which you can also do, so I can grab rotate and I can, I can rotate a group just like I would normal geometry, you have to pick a point that you want to rotate from. The nice thing about rotating a group is you are always rotating around the center of the container. So no matter what, no matter how the geometry inside looks, I'm always rotating from the very center of the face that I'm clicking on. Okay, speaking of the containers, uh, something that's very important to note, uh, I'll go ahead, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make a new group. And I'm going to, this should be another box. I'm sorry, I know, lots of boxes. And I'm going to push pull that up again. If I come in here and I click out, my container happens to align to the geometry of the box because this is what a container is, it's a box. Now if I was to double click, so if anytime you want to edit a box, a container, whether there's a box in it or some other shape, all you have to do is double click. You can right click and you can say edit group or you can double click and that'll just put you in there. As I make changes in here, I'm actually changing what's inside the container. So if I was to grab all of this, let's go ahead and rotate it. I wanna show you how the, the container changes. So I'm gonna rotate it like this. And then I'm going to go ahead and click out of it. If I pick on it now, look at, see how that happens? The containers are always created at 90 degrees to the axis where they're created. So this means that this box, the, the container no longer aligns to the sides of the box because the box is no longer 90 degrees to the axis. Not a bad thing. It's just something to note. It's something that you're going to want to keep an eye on because if I come in here, I'm going to go ahead and make one last <laughs> box in a group. I know, lots of boxes and groups here. Um, if I look at these two, uh, they're pretty much the same except the containers don't align. So if I come out here to this geometry and I say rotate and I spin it, well, I'm moving the geometry along with the container. So the container's actually turned right here as opposed to over here where the geometry inside the container was turned. That's the difference between these two. If ever I want to take geometry out of a container completely, I can right click and I can explode. Now, the thing to be conscious of is if I explode something, so I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna rotate it back to 90 degrees. I'm going to move it up on top of this geometry. Okay, so this is loose geometry down below. If I click on it, I'll see the different faces and edges. This is a group right here, so I can move it on and off, no stickiness. If I take this right now, right click and I explode, well, if I try to move it now, uh-oh, it's stuck. So the second you explode geometry, it is going to merge with any other loose geometry it has the opportunity to. So these two pieces are now stuck together. I would have to manually go through and separate those or undo a couple times to get into the groups, but these are now joined together, just like SketchUp likes to do with all loose geometry. 
So I know there's more to groups. Um, there's more to objects. We are going to next week, like I said, we'll come back and we're going to talk about components. And I think that's going to catch us up on some of the points that I missed there. There's some pieces I want to talk about and I hold myself because that's a component thing. We'll talk about it next week. So I'm guessing there'll be three videos in the end because we'll, we, this is an introduction to groups. Then we'll introduce components next week. And then I think we'll come back afterwards and talk about the difference of the two and how to use them together. So hopefully you like this video. If so, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. We create several videos a week around here and you will be notified of each and every one of them if you subscribe. Most importantly though, please leave us a comment down below. Most if not all of our content is created based on comments from viewers like you. We like making these videos a lot. We like them even more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.